Thanks to uh, Kenny for everyone for organising this and having me uh, here today. Um, I guess the uh, the audience in the this is all about lay buys, um, but it's also about a sort of uh, a sort of layering of um, archaeological uh, approaches, um, and I imagine some of you um, may be familiar, if not with the the exact details of. Dr. James Latin's work. Certainly you'll be familiar with some of the, the, the spirit of the uh, things he's been working on uh, over the past five years. So just to give you a couple of context before I go into the sort of main uh, bit of the presentation. Um, 2014, Dr. Latin writes, uh, Bail Down, A Lay By and Its World. Um, I have uh, a few copies here, which I'll happily uh, distribute to keen parties later on. Um, Essentially, it's, it's a very short study about a Scottish lay-by, which he saw as an important and overlooked archaeological site. And most of his work was dealing with what he called the overlooked. Um, and he had a collection of artefacts which he displayed in a museum context. <coughs> he also did a lot of writing about these places. Um, two years later, he goes to North America, and he goes to a number of lay-bys in the US state of Vermont. That leads to his publication, The, the Runaway Rest Area, um, ritual and recreation in northern Vermont, which I suppose you call uh, a comparative study. Again, I have a few copies available. Um, last year he gave a talk uh, here in London called Introduction to Flat Thinking, and subsequently he, uh, he went missing. He has resurfaced, so I won't go into that in detail, that's a whole story for another talk. Um, and uh, then we come into today's topic, which is the, the publication of um, A Return to Bale Dan. Um, which is a publication by uh, Cassandra Thorne, who wasn't able to come today, so I'll, I'm going to basically read this out on, on her behalf. But essentially, this is a, a, it's a study of Dr. Latin's original study of a lay-by, um, which I guess throws up um, all manner of questions for different or same. That's certainly that sort of, I guess, what, actually what David described as the sort of commonwealth of imagination um, which I'm certainly very uh, keen to open to future collaborations on um, and to carry out certainly more writing and research in this area. So always very happy to discuss with anyone who has an interest in lay bites or any of the, the things that are in. Um, so I'll, I'll just read through, it's a short text, I'll, I'll read through the kind of key highlights of that um, and I'll also flip through a number of photographs um, of the lay-by as I uh, do so. So, in his uh, 2014 uh, study, uh, Bail Dan, a lay-by in its world, uh, Dr. James Latin state that it's a place with no recorded past or future. His writing has clearly changed this position, and so my task is to reevaluate Bail Dan with a particular view to its problematic uh, future. As Dr. Latin's research and public outreach have been constrained in the last two years, I hope to reinvigorate the interest which he piqued with studies such as Bail Dam. Dr. Latin's interest in the everyday and how this relates to human behavior suggests his work is almost anthropological research. I am, however, somewhat skeptical of this academic mode of inquiry which has historically seemed to consist of an outsider shining a light on some alleged backward society. But, like Dr. Latin, I find value in the everyday, even if my local enthusiasm is gilded by my own background and from my training as an artist. Unlike most people, I am interested in Baildan, a lay-by a few miles outside of Angarth in southern Scotland. So, I approach Baildan with familiarity, but also slowly and with clear intention. However, what is not immediately obvious is why Dr. Latin stopped in Baildan. He displays a lack of confidence in his opening remarks, asking the reader, is this a joke? Is this a very boring subject? <laughs> and such a confession, I believe, is an effective device, <clears throat> openly stating the concerns he feels the reader may carry. And in doing so, Dr. Latin draws, him, draws us into his epistemological confusion, for he is questioning why the reader has stopped to pick up his short publication. 
No doubt the name Baildan has put off some prospective readers, sounding more like a dwarf king than an element of transport <laughs> infrastructure. Yet, the cover of the publication... It is, yeah, so the, the cover of the publication, seen here on, on the far right, um, features an attractive pencil drawing of the nabi. <laughs> here in larger version. Um, whose bold contrast of tone and heavy stroke surpass the photograph of the same scene on the last page. Okay, let's come around to that. I haven't quite got things in order, but... Uh... Oh, so here's the, here is the photograph. Um, this photograph is boring. It's not just aesthetic view, uh, but in its unremarkability, a phenomenon which has recently, I think, become ironically popular. While this quality is shared by the other photographs in the publication, they are very much illustrative of points made in the text and captioned accordingly. They serve as evidence for Dr. Latin's visit to Baildan and suggest a primacy of image <laughs> over text in terms of authenticity. I now turn to the main points Dr. Latin addresses in the publication, which he labels as conclusions. While I applaud uh, Dr. Latin's choice of subject matter and keen interest, I do wonder if he's been distracted by details. He says he is not going to pro provide a vast amount of text, yet in his sparse archaeology, he leaves us with many questions. His form of research is therefore quite different to that of the institutions which he has distanced himself from, and is predominantly focused on the collection of details. Dr. Latin notices things, yet he does not always know what to do with them. <laughs> Um, so I'll just read out some of the, some of the labels that Latin put in. So the first conclusion said that Baildan was uninhabited. Dr. Latin provides a short spatial analysis of the site, focusing on flat and horizontal surfaces. This gravitational approach does not consider the area under the ground and above it, which is likely to contain life forms such as worms, flies, beetles, wasps. I refrain from giving agency to the pieces of litter which Dr. Latin points out, Yet his statement does prompt a question of whether we won't ever expect a lay-by to be inhabited. Whether it is visited is a point he covers elsewhere, stating that with 10 to 15 visitors every day, Baildan is more popular than a domestic property. <laughs> his next conclusion is that Baildan is rich in contemporary rubbish. Uh, an example here of a discarded sandwich. Uh, with this statement, uh, Dr. Latin has opened up a question of whether all rubbish must be contemporary. Rubbish is a temporal label, so I guess we could consider the fate of a chocolate wrapper in a number of ways. It is a commodity display, it's a container for the product, it's a piece of societal waste, it's a product that's being consumed, and it's also a, a no-value item. Um, it's a product that's imminently going to be uh, destroyed. In this cycle of consumption, there is no time for historical or modern rubbish. If somehow the wrapper is preserved intentionally, it will become a specimen in a museum or collection, and so no longer be rubbish. To remove this temporal problem, there would then need to be a museum of rubbish, which could then provide a necessary categorization of objects as modern or contemporary, and so on and so on. Uh, Another of Dr. Lassen's conclusions is that uh, Baildan is in average condition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Lassen finds a variety of defects with the lay-by, including four to nine potholes. And aside from this numerological ambigu amb ambiguity, he wonders whether we should care about these. His feelings for asphalt are in fact clear. He cares deeply about the potholes. <laughs> While they in time will break down and destroy the smooth road surface, such transgressive behaviour provides more details for Dr. Latin's research. This is reinforced by the display in room 39 of his museum, Surface Tensions, which is a photographic archive of various road defects. <laughs> Dr. Latin's next uh, conclusion is that Baildan's former existence is uh, unclear. My concern for Dr. Latin's merely descriptive approach can be a little assuaged here. He has a knack of placing what I call significant details before the reader, which provide an unassuming gateway to a much larger and complex issue. While his methodology is often inventive, and we should not rely on him for a strictly empirical approach, he seems to relish taking on a mythical tone as the first author of Baildan. 
Knowing for certain the former existence of Baildan is simply not a priority for Dr. Latin. So we have some concluding remarks on the concluding remarks um, themselves. Um, we might ask, um, trying to get some idea of this, uh, what, why did Dr. Latin stop at uh, Baildan? Um, his, his interests probably most likely stem from a chance encounter, as motorists are likely to stop at Leibis. And the site opened up for him not as a place of function, um, you might eating, drinking, speaking, but as a space whose time was unclear to him. His thoughts, now framed in, bailed down and laid by in its world, have created a mythic layer for the site. Dr. Latin has undertaken only one further comparative study, the runaway rest area, which considers a lay-by in northern Vermont. He has not succumbed to the joy of detailing other places, nor of undertaking further research into the social or economic origins of the lay-by. He has communicated an otherwise local or scholarly concern to a wider audience. And by presenting it alongside other pieces of research, he has created a unique form. For while his notes on Baildan may seem overly descriptive or inconclusive, he has left the, opp he has left the opportunity for myriad more publications to be written about it. That these pieces will likely not be written, for Bale Dam remains a specialised area, <laughs> is a subject which no doubt merits further discussion elsewhere. <laughs> so yeah, that is the, that's the, the, the text of the uh, return to Bale Dam. Sadly also I don't, have, I don't have any copies of that. That's also published um, as... Uh, as, uh, as such, that's just what you've heard. So that's the uh, conclusion. So I just hope that there is more more time for studies um, of uh, laybys. Um, <laughs> very happy to hand these out as sort of early Christmas presents <laughs> um, as well. So thank you. Thank you.